Ta-da, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I am back to do another, another live stream. This is in celebration of the video that I am about to hit live on YouTube on talking about Yvette Young's new signature model, which is uh, pretty cool, pretty, 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 pretty cool. Uh, and in doing that, I was, you know, well, I've actually been transcribing a fair amount of Yvette's playing recently for somebody, uh, which has been fun and challenging. <laughs> so I thought that I would share some of that, seeing as it's on the mind, and uh, do some of that. So let me just get this shared up on Facebook. Yeah? See if that works, because, you know, Facebook can be rubbish with this stuff. <laughs> Uh, so the challenge with this is going to be largely uh, working out the tuning, <laughs> which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, is that gone live? Good. I can add an end screen to my video now, and then I can hit live. That's important, right? We just want to get our videos live. <laughs> uh, Vishay is at Nam. How's it going, man? <clears throat> no worries, Jeff. No worries, brother. Is that got? Is it working? There we go. Right. Let's. Uh... Oh no, don't want to import. There we go, do that. You're going to get to share in this joy with me as it happens. As it happens live. So, uh, that is one of the videos that we want to add as an end screen. Let's put that in there. And this is another one that we want to add. So we can put this in here. I'm going somewhere with this, don't worry. <laughs> so that should all be saved. Just waiting for some people to come online and then we can start talking about guitar stuff. Because we like guitar stuff. Right, visibility. Let's get this published. Public. And there we go. There's a video that just went live on my channel talking about Yvette Young's new signature, Ibanez. New signature, Ibanez. <clears throat> Your children better not be watching Edward. Mainly because uh, YouTube are very particular about if videos are being made for children. <laughs> they don't show ads on them and they uh, restrict your channel. Next best thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've not been to NAM in a few years, Vish. Uh, I only tend to go when, it's, um, when I'm being paid. Like, because it's like I work in the music industry, so going to Nam isn't like a holiday or like you know like an ego trip type thing. Um, I can either go to Nam and be paid, or I can stay here and be paid uh, and you know earn money from from my business. So um, I'm not going to go to Nam and miss out on being here and you know doing work and earning money. So um, yeah. But who knows, you know, maybe one day, uh, again, companies are going to want to take that risk on me. <laughs> it's happened in the past many times. <laughs> then I got a bit controversial. Right, so, uh, yeah, we're going to be looking at the uh, Andersons, Yvette Young meets the Captain, or Captain meets Yvette Young. Um, <clears throat> as I say, I've been transcribing a, a reasonable amount of Yvette just recently for someone. Um, oh, and I can actually prove it, so let's... <clears throat> just very briefly bring that up oh it's hard doing all this stuff so yeah here's a, a vet transcription i did for somebody just recently and here's another vet transcription that i did for somebody just recently and here's another vet transcription i did for somebody just recently so lots of vet young has been uh happening lots of transcribing has been happening um, and yeah, the, the thing with, with Yvette, the thing that I think is cool and the thing I struggle with is she plays in all these fucking wild tunings, right? And unless you have video, it's very difficult to work out what tuning she is using. This is a question I get asked all the time when it comes to transcribing. You'll notice I have a guitar for this because anytime a guitar isn't tuned to standard tuning, my perspective when I'm transcribing of where notes are played will just be totally off. I need to check with stuff like this, right? So, um, yeah, she plays in these wild tunings. Like currently, I for one of the riffs that I transcribed of hers, we are tuned to D, A, C sharp, F sharp, A, uh, E. Now that's a wild tuning, right? <laughs> um, 
yeah, how would I have worked that out without having some sort of um, reference, like video, right? <laughs> that made my job a hell of a lot easier. So in this particular instance, we are going to work from video, and I'm going to show you, you know, the easy way that we'll work out um, how she's actually uh, tuned. And then once we've got that, it's it's relatively easy from there. So, yeah, let me just read some comments, see who's online, and uh, get involved with you guys. I'll do the, the normal ad-related stuff that I have to do. Uh, so children are watching, yeah. Love Covet's music, great math rock band. Reminds me of This Town Needs Guns, Toe, stuff like that. Peace, peace. My 7 Sharp Fibers online, tapping stuff. Uh, use it, think they're very unique. Uh, what's a cornerstone of her style now that you've transcribed a few songs? Uh, weird tunings. <laughs> very weird tunings. Uh, yeah, very, very, very uh, weird tunings. <laughs> Uh, would be what I would say and yeah mixing things up just trying to do things uh, a little different so yeah uh, what do I think of insta pages that reach out to artists saying wow you're really talented we'd love to feature you dm us and they want you to pay them and hand over your content um Jesse like I, obviously I get messages like that uh, I get comments like that all the time it's business right that's how that's how business works um that's just simply how business works they're offering an advertising service so I don't hold it against them. Um, what it really comes down to is whether or not you as an artist value their platform. And I don't value any of these platforms. I simply just don't value any of these platforms. They don't, they're not worth anything. Um, I don't think that they, they result in, in subscribers, right? So I don't take issue with what they're doing. You know, they're operating a business. They're trying to operate a business. It's just not something that particularly interests me. Um, I wouldn't expect an advertising platform to put my content up and show it to people without paying. Great example would be television, right? I wouldn't expect to be able to put, you know, a video of me playing guitar and then saying, check out my Instagram page in the, the middle, uh, in the Super Bowl uh, halftime ads, right? And expect that to be free. They're offering a service, they're reaching, helping you reach a new platform and the consistency with which they can reach a new platform um, is what determines how much they're worth right so look at it like this uh we talk about ormsby guitars on um on the guitar talks podcast every every episode right they are a sponsor of the podcast uh they wouldn't be there unless there was some sort of benefit for us <clears throat> but they've weighed up the benefit for us versus the cost for them and they've deemed it to be worthwhile so they're happy with that same with uh, vpix i have an agreement in place with with vpix so that side, should check, shouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I have an agreement in place with VPix. And yeah, that's because what they get out of what it costs them, they deem to be worthwhile. So yeah, when it comes to these Instagram, you know, we'll feature you pages, I just look at them and I don't think that what they offer in return is worth what they would expect to be compensated for it. Because I just don't think that they result in you know showing your showing your content to to lots of followers is one thing but unless those followers are actually actively engaged with the content and then are likely to to click through and become fans of the artist then their platform is worthless so that's my opinion on that i'm doing good ben uh, can never get the hang of other tunings throws off my eyes and ears too much yeah i get that <laughs> Tried playing open tunes for the first time again. Would you just learn shapes, trial and error, go by ear? Totally depends on the tuning, La La Lulu. It really does. I, I play in several older tunings. I play in lots of open tunings. And I have methods in place for being able to play those relatively fluently. Uh, but some of these more wild tunings, um, you have to approach them very differently. So I'm not very great at those. Uh, heavy transcribing grind. Good stuff, minus seven sharp five. Notice that you find it really hard to figure out what chords uh, the solos are being played over. Yeah, man, practice. <laughs> I know you didn't want to hear that, but yeah, man, practice. <laughs> I was going to play some chords on the guitar, right? But because I'm tuned to this, it's difficult. <laughs> but, you know, if I were to play um, an E7 sharp 9 chord, like the Hendrix chord, right? If you hear that, because you've played it and heard it so many times, I think any time you were to hear that on a record, you'd immediately know, ah, I'm pretty sure I know what that is. Uh, and I think that is, um, that's the key to this, like it's exposure. Um, so Jesse says, yeah, it just seems to me that they can only really guarantee is that they post my video on their page. Like you said, don't care really. Yeah, exactly. So they can guarantee that and they'll try and guarantee that they can get you subscribers, but that's not something they can guarantee that all has to go into the calculation of the risk, um, of the payoff, you know, 
Um, so they don't really do anything for me. It's not something that interests me, interests me. Because uh, I just again I don't think that their their fan bases are uh, active with them. Whereas you like you guys now the reason um, VPix value my platform, the reason Ormsby value my platform, is because uh, you guys are actively engaged. <laughs> People send me tweets saying, "Hey man, just bought your book and checked out the Star Singer slides and bought one of their slides too." Like that's that's valuable um saying let me post you on my instagram page that's not valuable <laughs> otherwise i'll just start charging people to put you on my youtube channel you know that's that would be stupid um, make content that you believe in and i don't i think these instagram pages that are just trying to feature you on their pages they're not making content they believe in they'll feature absolutely anyone that pays them and that's something that i'm not interested in in doing so do i like any other math rock bands it's not a genre i'm particularly up on to be completely honest um yeah, so let's crack on, shall we? Uh, I'll do the ad thing first because I have to do that. Uh, big thank you to my supporters over on Patreon. Thank you very much for checking me out on Patreon and supporting me on Patreon. It allows me to do things like this. So if you would like to be like these awesome people, there is a link in the description. You can check me out for as little as one dollar. One dollar gets you access to my private patreon only facebook group where you get to engage with me and everybody else uh get lots of conversation happening suggestions for new content helping me find new things you know transcriptions all the good stuff so if you'd like to check us out there link is in the description that is very much appreciated you can also head on over to amazon check out one of my books just search for levi clay and i'm sure you will find one of the books on screen uh, because yeah why wouldn't you but I mean I say that it's also worth mentioning that um, if you go there now you'll also find this one 100 slide licks for blues guitar this is my new book new book yeah check it out totally unrelated to this Yvette Young stuff totally different style but if you would like to learn some slide blues stuff or some blues slide stuff then uh, that will be of interest to you right with that all out of the way let's get on to Yvette Young so as I said, the challenge with this is absolutely going to be in working out her tuning. So what I'm going to do just quickly is I'm going to let you listen to her playing so you can have an understanding of what's what we're going to be you know, working on here. I'll just make sure all the, all the levels are correct and we're not getting any echoes. No, everything should be okay. Jason Shadrick is at NAMM. Of course he is. Of course he is. How's it going, man? What's your favorite thing you've seen over there so far? <laughs> Say the Yvette Young signature model. model. Right, so... that gives you an idea of what we're looking at here right so the first thing we can notice immediately is she has a capo on the second fret capo on the second fret so i'm going to do that immediately i'm going to put a capo on my second fret ah. and then a couple of things i noticed from listening to her play So we've got these two bass notes. Um, we've got this this bass note here. So our low string is, well, this note is G. So the low string is tuned to F. Um, let me just put this up. Uh, we will put that to F, uh, put a cap on the second fret, and let's, let's continue on through these and, and just get um, get this tuning sorted out. So, I, I, yeah, like I say, this note we definitely get there. Um, then the next string, bar. So the fretted note is uh, is a B. Uh, sorry, the capoed note is a B. Therefore, that note is tuned to A. Now, based on the, the couple of um, Yvette Young transcriptions that I've done already, I'm relatively confident that I know what tuning she's playing in now, but I want to continue on just so you really know how I'm doing, how I would do something like this. So, 
Let's go back a little bit further. Let's look for some other points that we can accurately get. I think that's what. Yeah, so we've got a chord here. So that little chord fragment she played there. That tells me, I hear this note, which we've already worked out, we've already worked out that a string is tuned to A. So we know that the uh, capoed note on the D string is a D. So we're going to be tuned to C. The string is tuned to C. So we've got a major, yeah, you're absolutely... Uh, we've got a G, yep. Well, sorry, this isn't, this, the, so the... Uh, capo is at the note A, the open string will be tuned to G, so that's that. Uh. So th again, that chord little frag that little chord fragment she plays, that's what she plays there. So if we know that this third fret is tuned to uh, D, then the open string would be a B. And now we're just looking for that high string. That's really hard to be certain. I'm gonna get the closer shot. Okay, so I at that point you can see her play the twelfth fret on the high E string. So we know So we know that that twelfth fret is an E, so the open string is going to be an E. So our tuning is F, A, C, G, B, E. F, A, C, G, B, E. Let's just get my guitar really in tune. There's our tuning. Right, cool. Tuning sorted. <laughs> Let's see what comments that I got there um, while I was doing that, struggling through that. Uh, are my books for general play? Uh, any sort of difficulty scale throughout? Or uh, one song maybe a beginner, another expert? Jesse, they're all method books, so you, you start, you know, relatively easy uh, and progressively the book gets harder as it walks you through the concepts that we're looking at. See if that I click. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so La La Lulu, um, that is how I would have to figure out this particular tuning, because her tuning, this particular tuning, is um, you know so far removed from common. If a song is in dad gad, I can pick that up pretty damn quick, right? Because I'm so used to that as a tuning. I'm so used to people playing in that particular tuning. 
But with this one, I I need to really be accurate because you're going to find that some things will be impossible to to play without you know really accurately knowing for sure what she's using. So now we know that that's going to make this a whole lot easier. Uh... Yeah, right. I'm going to get on with it. So with that there, with my tuning sorted, and Jason, you do win a prize. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the prize is, but you win one. <laughs> now, I just want to check, because um, the captain makes a comment on time signatures, but I'm pretty sure this is all in 4-4. Yeah, so if we go uh, 1, 2... Okay, yeah, so we have a, a switch here. Uh, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, two, three. Look at you showing off, Jason. That's how you knew the answer, you dirty, dirty cheat. <laughs> Um, yeah, as I said, as I said, she uh, she plays in multiple tunings. Uh, if I look at these ones that I've done here, this Yvette Young loop, she is tuned to uh, E, A flat, B, G flat, A flat, E flat. Well, you should do that in sharps, really. Um, e, G sharp, B, uh, <laughs> F sharp, uh, G sharp, and D sharp. So that's that. Uh, on the parachute demo, she was tuned. Uh, what would that be? E, G sharp, B, F sharp, B, D sharp. So that's again different. And then this one, uh, low string is tuned to to D. So we've got D, A, C sharp, F sharp, A, and E. <laughs> so all totally different tunings, and I respect that. Like uh, alter tunings is something I I really haven't spent a lot of time in. Open tunings, that's one thing, but altered tunings, where you're tuned to these much stranger open sounds where you they're designed for drones and things like that, that is not a, a field of expertise of mine at all. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I like that people do things like that. Okay, so time signature wise, we're going between 4 4 and 3 4. Um, so we have, if I count along just from the bit that I first notated. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three. So there's, you know, the basic, um, there's our time signatures, if you like. Uh, in terms of getting this transcribed, I won't start from here because we want to. For something like this, I really want to be able to see what she's doing. So we, uh, once we've got, once we have a basic understanding of what she is doing, it will then be much easier for us to just go back and add that bit in. As, or add into this, there's lots of repeats that makes things easier, right? <laughs> um, yes, Gaza, she does sound great. So if we go from here. put the uh, subdivisions in there that's three that's yeah now we know um, I will leave the two bars of four there we'll come back to those uh, we know that she's playing Does she? There's two notes there. 
She hits both. So we repeat the same thing. Uh. Sliding up to the five. I'm going to put this uh, oh, wrong button. There we go. Those are the notes, I'm not crazy on the fingering, but... <laughs> Hammer there, or is it a tap? Yeah, but uh... so we go from uh... <laughs> that's ten technically, I guess, and I guess that'd be fifteen because of the capo <laughs> with tap. I mean, I do, but... Does she slide down on that? Yeah, well, I mean, it sounds like it. Yeah, she does. Okay, now I get it. Um, so we then hit the... Huh. Uh... That's what's being played. We can probably make the uh, point that this is a hammer on from nowhere. Now, I just want to triple check that fingering. In fact, later on, it will get up close of it. Oh, no, okay, that's my mistake. This isn't played there. It's an open string. That helps. Now that's that's the point with this, right? Video is and hearing things slow like that makes a lot more sense now. Now that is that a hammer. Sounds like a hammer to me. Yeah, that's a hammer from nowhere. So that, just that part there, right? You could practice that for, for hours. to the tap of course I want a bit more compression to get this right but <laughs> um, I totally agree with you on that Jesse this is a uh, it's interesting to listen to but it's not something that I have any interest in playing um, <clears throat> I, it's like a respect that I have for it but you don't expect to hear me putting any of this out anytime soon 
So there's that little part. We know we've got that. Now we've got a lot of noise in this bit. But let's line these up. Let's uh, get the sub divided by four because this is in 4-4 four, four again. So let's put that 4-4 four, four time signature in. I'm going to actually go to a later part in the song because there's just so much I think there's I think that bit's been poorly executed more so than it being um I feel wrong even saying that right <laughs> um I think there'll probably be a clearer example of it later on so let's let's listen to it later. You don't need compression to get good sound in taps but you have to understand what compressors do if I have a compressor on this Compressors are going to take notes that are very loud and lower the volume of them, squash them down. And it's going to take notes that are very quiet and it's going to push their volume up. So it compresses your sound from having this wide dynamic range to having a smaller dynamic range. So getting a tap like that is always going to sound a certain way, but it's never going to be as strong as you hitting that. In fact, if I just put my compressor pedal on, Probably not set up for this type of thing. So that's without, uh, sorry, it's with the compressor and then without. Just sounds a little bit weak, so I guess I could put that compressor on. Now, I don't really have, <coughs> have my settings on my compressor set up for this type of tapping, right? <laughs> it's set up for country, uh, but we'll, we'll go with it <clears throat> anyway. So, I'm gonna see here. I think it's really clearly executed here, so I'm going to use this bit. Oh, it's a different part. Ignore me. So it's almost the same, and I can see the difference. It's just a bastard. Because we can hear. We're getting the, okay, so I'm gonna go back to the original bit. I love the pressure of doing this on a live stream. <laughs> go I'm gonna put this all on one part
That's really tricky to, to I almost don't want to put that on one part. I almost want to put that on two parts. Just put a tempo in this as well, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I may come back and re-notate that so it's on two separate parts. Both of those with a... oh, okay, she's that's not a tap, that's a hammer. I don't usually like using these hammer-ons from nowhere, but I think in this particular instance, I think these are actually quite relevant. I think in this particular instance they're quite relevant. Um, now, what do I want to do with this? I think. How long does that low note ring out for? Rings for two beats. Uh, I'm going to put that in there. Definitely. Uh, we'll delete that from the low part. I mean, it's right. Uh, what I want to do is I just I just don't like the way it displays on the page. Again, style of music probably not best designed for notating, right? <laughs> Oliver and I don't have perfect pitch. <laughs> So same idea we got on the, in the bass. I'm gonna put that as a low string in there, um, in the second voice. Again, hammer on from nowhere, very important for that. Now we've got copy paste of here, but the last notes change. 
in essence what we have there keep going we're back to three for this right so subdivide by three so you're hitting uh, the G so we're gonna copy that and then fix it So it would be uh, that uh, to that with a hammer. Nice. Uh, Nice transition. Very, very nice. That's a lovely little phrase there. Should move my damn face out of the way, shouldn't I? Sorry. There you go. <laughs> mm. Now just that, I think you could spend hours to having fun with that. That's a nice little phrase, right? Back to four. <clears throat> now this is the variation, if you like. That does, beautiful. She hits this um, open note at the top. <laughs> I'm glad you appreciate the channel, Andreas. So I'm going to put that on the top so it can ring out, and on the bottom I'm going to put like that. Ah, uh, that's maybe how I fix. That's how I fix that bit up there and make it look a little bit neater, because everything's about getting things to look neat on the damn page. If your work doesn't look neat, what's the point? All right, if we get rid of that, and then we put a hammer on there. Like that, that already looks a little bit neater. Uh, really don't like that being there. It's neater. <laughs> I have, Rob's paid me to do it in the past. Now the tricky bit with this is going to be getting the transition between second voice and, uh, and first voice, right?
we could I can't really get it in there. You need You will have to put this in the second voice. But you can get that also in the second voice like this and then And then you copy and paste this from the first, and you'll have a nice smooth transition uh, to that. Uh, copy the wrong bit, there you go, from that. We'll have a nice smooth transition. Still in four, uh, 3 4. So put that in 4 4. Now, when we look at this, We've got a nice, you know, it's clear what's happening here. So I might do the same on this. I'm going to go into the second voice and I'm going to copy this. I'll put this in the second voice here. Then I'm going to go into that first voice. I'm going to delete that because the second voice is playing it. Uh, that's in the second voice. I'm then going to delete that, 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 and that. I'm going to insert that and put that like that. I think that looks a little bit better. I'm, all, I'm happy with that. I think that turned out well. Now it's starting to look good. It's starting to look good. So Jake, uh, what is it that having a second voice actually denotes? Is it like someone's, uh, something secondary that's happening but not related to the main phrase or something? Uh, Jake, to be completely honest, my approach to it, my thought process behind it, is to make things look as clear as possible on the page. So up, uh, voice one will always have your stems going up, voice two will have your stems going down. If you try and notate everything with the stems going up, uh, you it, you can run into things overlapping each other. If you have two separate musical ideas happening at the same time, things can can uh, really confuse themselves. In this particular instance, though, the reason I've done it is because uh, I want the way this looked before, and I'm still not crazy about this this part here. In fact, I'd never normally do this. I would never normally do this, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to put that in that voice. And then I'm going to change that to that. Again, it's not perfect. It's not exactly how I want it, but what she's playing isn't exactly how I want it. <laughs> um, I think that's... I still don't like it. I still don't love it, but um, it, does, it does the job. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I love that, Jerry, yeah. Uh, I could probably transcribe everything he's ever going to play, yeah. D minor. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I understood what you were getting at, Andreas. Uh, right, let's keep going. That should be the same here. Um Now, there's no reason in this particular instance why I wouldn't just um, uh, why I wouldn't just put it in the top voice. Yeah. 
The only difference, the only thing I've added in there is uh, this low note. You can see the stem is also going down and it's just telling you that that note is ringing out. Get the idea? Now that is verbatim this. I hate what that... That's really weird, it's taking... It's, sli it's, not, it's sliding up to the wrong note here. It should be sliding up to... But it's not, it's, it's sliding up to four. It's not... Yep, Guitar Pro it sucks though, doesn't it? So then we can copy and paste that in here. Uh, these are both in 3-4. Now with that knowledge in place, I would imagine this to be the same, right? Uh, yeah, so it's, it's a repeat, right? So uh, we'll just copy paste that, which means I can relatively confidently say that the thing she plays at the very start Will just be this. So I'll put uh, like a, a hairpin in there, just so you can see that it's fading in. And that's it. That's all there is to it. It's um, it's not massively complicated. It's a an eight bar phrase that repeats twice. <laughs> um, how very Instagram, <laughs> but enjoyable, right? And I, I enjoyed transcribing that. So uh, let me put a, let me save this. I'll upload this for my Patreon guys. Uh, there we go. Nice and easy. Let's take a listen to it. So we're gonna sound like this. I won't make it sound a little bit more like, a little bit more like that. So let's go into our track. We're on a clean strat. Let's add in some reverb. So it's not as as um, wet as that. And we have a lot more top end in the. Not too many effects, but just uh, enough enough to get started. So let's uh, save this for my Patreon guys. I bet Young Anderson's. I'll upload that for the Patreon guys shortly. <laughs> anyway, let's take a listen to it. So uh, it's going to sound like this. Do we need the, the count? Probably not. Let's put an intro click. And should I probably put the uh, probably put the last notes of that in, shouldn't I? <laughs> I'm just going to respond to Neil. Neil, there's a link there to the software that I'm using. Um, <clears throat> there's a link in the description of that. If you purchase it via that, it's an affiliate link, and uh, it's a great way to support my channel. Uh, so let me put the last chord in. feels wrong not to go back to 4-4, four, four. <laughs> so I'm going to put the last bar in 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens if we try and play it along with a vet, though, right? <laughs> I'll just go from that bit there. So 
We should be able to try. One, two, three, four. So I'd say we're pretty spot on there. I am very happy with how that's turned out. Um, right, that's me. Let me uh, bring up my thing. I need to get ready to go out shortly because it's magic night. <clears throat> Unplug my guitar. Right, any any final questions? Anything that anybody wants to ask me about this? This particular artist, <clears throat> artiste. Or anything else while you have me. Um. <laughs> and of course, that's what I do for a living. That's what I do. I listen to music and I write it down. What a fun job, right? <laughs> uh, and I'm reasonably good at it. Uh, yeah, as always, if you would like to learn to do this type of thing, if you want to become better at transcribing, um, check out my Patreon page. There's a link in the description. I teach people how to transcribe. That is the main focus. That's why I started the Patreon page. And the money that Patreon brings in um, allows me to take more time out of all the actual transcribing work that I have to do to do content like this. Uh, and to, well, I built a music studio, right? So anything... Um, uh, anything like that is a, a good use of, of my time and therefore your support is really appreciated so you don't have to though you know you'll always be able to check out 99 percent of my content online um for free on youtube so yeah um yeah link in the description check me out on patreon uh you can also support me on amazon by checking out one of my books, just go and look for Levi Clay. Uh, none of those teach you how to transcribe, but if you want to learn how to play country guitar or you want to learn how to play blues slide guitar, then um, check one of them out. Very different to this type of thing. But uh, yeah, what you can get from those, what you would expect, I should say, from those is, you know, those books have come from transcribing. I've transcribed a hell of a lot of slide players. I've transcribed a hell of a lot of country players. So they're very authentic. Um, and that, that was always important to me. And of course, you can check out the latest book, which is... 100 slide licks for blues guitar and um yeah the guitars will be getting hung jesse end of the month end of the month i'm having to uh, get special parts made for the hangers because the walls in here because of the soundproofing the walls are so thick um i need things that go all the way through the walls and clamp on the other side other sides of the walls to really hold them in place and know that i'm i'm uh, that they're going to be good and solid so uh, 100 slide licks for blues guitar please do check that out um, also, you know, check out VPix. Head on over, give them some love, let them know that I sent you. Uh, I've worked with Vinny and the guys for a very long time now, um, getting on for 10 years, and I'm a, a big fan of his work. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't need it for this, but I always have my... I could do this in each one of these streams. Let, get the damn finger condom off. There you go. That's been my pick of choice for 10 years. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, let me read these comments. So we answered that. Yeah, I'm glad that everybody enjoyed that. What kind of magic deck do I use primarily? Jesse, I don't play... Um, I don't tend to play a lot of standard. I don't play a lot of standard uh, or, or modern or vintage or legacy. I don't tend to play competitive formats. Uh, I have... I have a uh, you know, mono red standard deck that works, but now of course the new set's out, so there's probably a bunch of stuff in there that's going to change up the meta a little bit. I don't have competitive decks for that. Uh, I'm a big uh, EDH commander player, and I have probably 12 pretty decent commander decks that I've built, and I'm always looking at building more, so I'm, I'm sketching out ideas for a new deck that I'm building at the moment. Uh, I like commander because you can be more extravagant with your deck design. <laughs> you can... Um, you know, put a lot more personality into your deck. So uh, when I play Commander, what do I play? Um, I was going to say I play my Urza deck, but I don't. I have that. That's my flashy deck. Uh, I really like black. I have, of all of my magic decks, I have more black decks than anything else. I've built myself a vampire deck 
an Olivia Valdaran vampire deck, which oh, she's red black to be fair, uh, but she's the only red card in there. So I've got an Olivia vampire deck that I love. I've got a rat tribal deck, uh, Maranora tribal deck, which I love. I've got a um, uh, a zombies deck, which I love. I love playing my zombies deck. I love that horde of the undead type thing. Uh, I've just built an Athreos god of passage deck. Uh, that I love. That's more. That's an Orzov um, uh, aristocrats style deck. Um, I like those. Anything that <laughs> I'm one of those people that you just don't want to ever have to play commander against because I'm gonna I'm gonna ruin your day. <laughs> I'm gonna take all the fun away um, from you and just give you all those hard decisions uh, when playing. So those. Um, but I have honestly, I've got so many uh, nice commander decks that I've built. This um, it's difficult to to pick one or two or three. I've got a big Eldrazi deck, and I've got um, a Naya Atlapalani deck, and I've got a, uh, what else do I play? I built a nice Tulsimir deck, which I like, the Friend to Wolves, uh, uh, friend of, yeah, Friend of Wolves. Um, hmm. What else have I built? A Lathless deck. I'm trying to think what's in my carry case at the moment. Uh, lots, to answer the question, lots. <laughs> um, lots and lots, I build lots of things. Uh, yes, Troy, please do suggest future transcriptions. Um, but went on a massive um, magic rant there, right? <laughs> uh, hang those guitars, yeah, that's happening. Uh, Julian, how long have I been transcribing? I have been transcribing... Wow, I'm 31 now, and I trans started transcribing pretty seriously when I was 16. So... 15 years 15 years and not just like a little bit here and there like when i started transcribing it was like i'd sit and transcribe for an hour um and i'd maybe transcribe for two hours a week total and then the more and more i got into it the more and more i started seeing progress in my transcribing but also um not just progress in my transcribing but improvements in my musical understanding of things i started to put more and more time into it so i started transcribing an hour every single day and then one hour every single day turned into two hours every day and suddenly it became the main thing that I was doing in terms of practice, in terms of developing a skill. I was spending more time transcribing. And then after I'd been transcribing for maybe four or five years, I started to get paid work as a transcriber. And then things really kicked up a notch and it started to be four or five hours a day every single day I was transcribing. And now it's my living, it's what I do for a living. So I transcribe music for several hours every single day of my life. Um, so I've been transcribing a hell of a long time. I have considered a book on transcribing Nicole Coe, uh, but I don't think it translates all that well to a book format. I have been working on the concept of doing a full video course, like a full um, downloadable co course. I don't know, probably 10 plus hours of video content with things to actually, you know, challenges and um, for you to actually do and tab downloads and uh, even the potential I'm working on how I do this but for you to submit things but then I remember that really that's what my Patreon page is all about My the, what I love about that Patreon group is I have a, a monthly transcription challenge and everybody is supposed to go and transcribe the challenges and then submit them and I can give them feedback on their work and help them improve their work right um, so that's that was always what the Patreon was about, but I am looking to do like a full downloadable video course. So I'll go with that. Um, I love being called a nerd by Tailed Feature, a man that speaks and teaches Gaelic. <laughs> Thank you for the compliments, Al. Matthias Asato, potentially. What headphones are these? These are... No, I haven't actually. These are the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pros. I really like these headphones. Like, I really like these headphones. I have multiple pairs of them. <coughs> They're very comfortable. Very comfortable. I can wear these for hours and hours at a time and not really feel like there's anything on my head. So, uh, band, Marbin, song, Redline. Um, Troy, I can't, generally speaking, I can't do... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Studio. There we go. I can't do studio recordings. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate that, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I will do a course. It will happen. It's just one of those things, like it takes so much damn time. This last book that I just released, this took me a year to write, and it wasn't because I was spending a year every single day of my life working on this book. It's because I had to fit it in around all the other things that I was having to do. Um, and, you know, the year before that, I think I released three books. 
So um, yeah, it took me a whole year to write that one, and and before that, it was much much faster. So <laughs> uh, anyway, as I was saying regarding Troy, um, yeah, it tends to need to be um, it tends to need to be live recordings for YouTube because studio recordings immediately get flagged by the um, content owner. Having said that, of course, again, I work as a transcriber, so if you want something transcribed specific, shoot me a recording, send me an email, and uh, I can do a job for you. Like That's not a problem. Anyway, um, I am going to log off now, but thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you got something out of this. I hope you enjoyed it. Patrons, guys watching, uh, this tab will get uploaded shortly, so you are going to have to go and learn it. You're not going to have to, but <laughs> you may enjoy going to learn it. So much love, guys. Thank you so much for all of this love, kindness, generosity, and support. It really does mean a lot. And I hope that you are just, I hope that you're getting things out of these as much as I enjoy, you know, putting the time into them. So, uh, yeah, I will catch up with y'all in the near future. Good evening. Good night. Good day. Wherever you are, go and have a great 2020. Much love, laters.